Hi, I'm Jamie. I'm Gemma. And this is the Body Smart Podcast. And if you've ever thought you might be a little bit of a perfectionist and maybe have an all or nothing mindset, this is the episode for you. We're going to be talking about willpower, decision fatigue, and how you just sometimes need to embrace the suck. Yes, I did say that. (laughs) Okay, I wanted to talk to you today about something that I know I have. Yeah. You don't. I I did. Okay. Still still do in some way, the ways. So you've seen you've seen the notes, haven't you? Then have, you have. You've I taken have. a sneaky peek at the notes. Because <laughs> today we're going to talk about all or nothing mindset. Yeah. First of all, in your own words, how would you describe this? Let's say you're having a conversation with somebody down a bar. You get chatting about what you do, and like, oh, all or nothing mindset. I've heard you talking about that on social media. What does that mean? Yeah, I think it's, would you agree it's similar to like the perfectionist mindset yeah. in some degrees? Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's like those, if we're very much talking about health and fitness here, aren't we? So it's kind of like, right, I'm going to get on a diet on Monday. So when it's like, right, I'm going to get on that diet. I'm going to like cut out all the foods. I'm going to go to the gym six times. <laughs> I'm going to go at it 110%. And it's like, that's what we feel like we've got to do. We've got to, like, if I'm not going to do it all, I, there's no point in doing any of it. Um, and, you know, that mindset can, can really sabotage people and, and not allow them to even start sometimes because mm-hmm. it feels so overwhelming that you've got to do all these things like how you know just, i haven't got time to do that I haven't, how am i going to possibly factor that in so um all enough of mindset shows up in lots of different ways in our lives um but around health and fitness that's probably one sort of good example i want you to go back to your example though because you said oh i used to go on talk to me how have you jamie moran alien he, <laughs> <laughs> he's got all his shit together <laughs> how have you ever had an all or nothing mindset um, I think I was just, I, and I still am, I like I care about the details in a lot of things and can be very perfectionist about certain things. Mm-hmm. And um, I realized as for probably more, I, th- I think business has taught me a lot because in the sense of it's kind of like if things don't go well, there's no one else to blame other than yourself. Mm-hmm. So it, it there's a very there's a high level of reflection of like well it didn't work so who else whose else fault is it so i would like i would be over critical over so many things and sometimes that would stop me or delay me putting work out or completing work because i'm like it has to be right i have to have it 100 it has to be i have to get everything all the bits done uh, and it's not that i'm still don't care about details i very much do but it's just understanding sometimes that um i've used possibly maybe used that as an excuse to just not put the work out or even mm-hmm. do the work because it's not 100% right or the details haven't all been done um and then yeah that showed up in just just other areas of of my life as well maybe when I was a lot younger um around exercise like I wouldn't go and exercise if I didn't have a great night's sleep and I had my pre-workout meal before like I wasn't going to create the complete optimal environment mm-hmm. instead of being like well it's probably better to just still go and yeah. have a 60% workout than a workout that's optimally perfect, which isn't really realistic in it, <laughs> in somebody's life. I heard a really good phrase this week where they were talking about when it comes to like your health and mm. your fitness, that often we get stuck in thinking we have to have the perfect plan. Yes. And actually, like you've just said there, executing a 60% plan on a consistent basis is better than doing the perfect plan once or twice. Of course. Of course it is because it's consistency. Life's mm-hmm. a long game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like your health and fitness and nutrition, if you don't use it, you lose it. So if you're just going to do it every now and then whenever, when the stars align and things <laughs> are perfect, you're not going to get much done. No. Versus if you find ways of being, you know, getting 60% of the stuff done all the time, you're going to see more consistent progress. And guess what? As you start to figure out more of those things, you'll probably be able to align things more to be 70, 80, 90, or even up, probably ne- never 100% because there's just, just too many variables in life. Um, but, you know, ironically, like doing less and managing your expectations in the beginning actually sets you up to do more in the future. In what way? How, can you explain that? What do you mean? Um, so like, let's say we've got a client that, you know, they're like, oh, I, I want to start going to the gym. I want to start doing exercise. And like, yeah, you know, like, I'm going to go six times a week. And then we talk about the, you know, the commitments that they've got. Maybe they've got kids, maybe they haven't, maybe they work 20 hours a week, maybe 60, who knows? But, you know, realistically, maybe they can only exercise three times a week, you know, when we've actually looked at their schedule properly. So a first part of that is over commitment. I'm going to do all the things. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to make this huge amount of commitment. And instead, you know, they, uh, so, so they want to do six, but we, talk about it and we get them to do three so then they consistently do three for the next month and maybe they dial in other parts of their health and fitness and then they go what you know what actually 
now that I've got more energy from working out and I'm feeling better, I actually don't mind getting up and doing a morning workout. I could probably get a fourth workout in. So they've created space mm-hmm. through the fact that they manage their expectations in the beginning to then be able to do more in the future. Versus if they had just started at six times a week, they might have done it for two weeks, burnt out and gone, this is too hard, I can't do it. So there's a huge part of like expectation management and realize that you don't have to do all the things right away, Mm -hmm. but you can start to do more of the things over time as it becomes easier and the behaviors become more subconscious. Is doing things like, because all or nothing perfectionism sometimes, and like the examples you give there, it can Mm. be about extremes. I'm really guilty of this and I'm sure you're going (laughs) to rip the shit out of me for this and you're very welcome to. Okay. (laughs) But I have been guilty of being that woman of extremes. Like one day. I know you have. I know you have, Gemma. I know you very well. (laughs) And then the next day I'm doing everything. Yeah. Yeah. And and there's, there's a, there's a time and a place for that. I think, um, if we look at like challenges and we've run challenges in the past and there's challenges like 75 hard and we've had the 28 day challenges, all these fantastic challenges. And I think they are great for extrinsic motivation, Mm -hmm. which is basically like, right, we've got 28 days. We're going to do all the things. We're going to get it done. We're in a community. We've got this camaraderie. Let's show up and get shit done. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? You've got that mentality. Great. But then the 28 days ends and then it's like, or what now? Yep. <laughs> and often people just revert back to old habits, old behaviors, because what they've done in that time was so, so difficult. And I think challenges and sprints can be really effective. And, and, and even in your health and fitness, to some degree, can be a good thing. But we have to remember that what I said before, that your health and fitness is a lifelong game. Yes. So you need to create intrinsic motivation. And intrinsic motivation means you're going to take action no matter what, because it's, it's intrinsically important to Mm -hmm. you. It doesn't mean that you can't create external or extrinsic goals. Like, Hey, I want to lose X amount of weight this month, or Hey, I've got a wedding come up and I want to look sexy as fuck at it. You know, (laughs) there can be, you can have extrinsic goals, but if you want to create true sustainable results, you have to have intrinsic motivation. Um, And that's when we tend to get into like people's whys. So like my intrinsic why of taking action is that it stops me from going loopy. (laughs) And that's pretty much it. Like if I don't exercise on a regular basis, I get more agitated, I sleep awfully. That has the negative feedback on everything else too. Mm -hmm. I start eating bad. um, My mental health goes to shit. I get more angry. It's just not worth it. Like I literally don't like that person. I don't, I don't, I don't like that Jay. I don't want to know that Jay. He he can stay over there. I never want to meet him. So for me, my intrinsic motivation is that I want to train and it because it makes me feel good it makes me show up the best version of me that for me is enough for me to always show up with exercise and it always will be because i don't want to when i do meet that person i'm like you're, you're, i hate you <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> fuck off <laughs> you know what i mean so, i've only met him a couple of times yeah right, he's, a, he's, a, he's a crank and, <laughs> and i'm like I even know i know i'm being like that i can't rationalize it it's, mm. it's weird i don't like it so for me i i have got an intrinsic why to keep taking action um, and I, I'm fully aware, like that, that not every, like I do think exercise. Everyone needs to do it for a whole host of different reasons. But I do realize that I'm probably more on the extreme side of things. So if your intrinsic why isn't like mine, you have to start asking those other questions around why it's important for you to keep taking action, mm-hmm. and that can allow you to create. That'll allow you to do the things that are necessary when you don't feel like doing them. Yeah. So I think uh, for me that intrinsic motivation is only a recent thing for me Mm -hmm. definitely and and it's 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 come through that self-trust and self-belief and you know you will take the piss out of me I did do 75 hard I know you did right which is 22 months ago nearly two years ago I did it and just to explain Mm -hmm. for anybody who might be listening who hasn't come across it so 75 hard was a challenge coined by Andy Frizzella of Mm -hmm. first form yep who had a podcast called MF CEO, Mother Effing CEO, that was it. <laughs> and he called this the tactical yep. way to win the war on yourself. And I got to a point where I think a lot of people do, where I was just sick of I was sick of myself. I was just so yep. sick of myself. I saw somebody else doing this online and mm-hmm. me being me in that old all or nothing mindset. Thought, yep. that's it. I'm gonna do all of the things. Yeah. And so The deal with 75 hard is you do two 45 minute workouts per day. One of them has to be outside. Mm -hmm. Drink 
four gallons of water. No, four. One gallon or four litres. Gall- yeah, that's Four right. gallons of water, you might die. I might die. Yeah. A gallon of water. But but yeah. a, gal- a UK gallon is less than an American gallon, oh, I think. Yeah, I think it's I like was doing the wrong 3.6 litres no, or that's something. That's it, but UK it. gallon's more than an American, so I was drinking more than I should have been. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, pick a diet and stick to it. Read 10 pages of a self-development book, no audiobooks. Mm. Take a progress picture every day. Yeah. That was it, right? So that's the 75 hard. And I did that. I mm. made a decision and I started it the next day. And it w- it helped me develop that self-trust. But unfortunately yep. what happened, which is what happens with a lot mm. of these things, day 76, <laughs> everything went in yeah. the fuck it bucket. Yeah. <laughs> like, I yeah. just stopped. I just stopped. Oh, that was the other part of it. Don't drink alcohol. That was yeah. the other. You couldn't have a drink. So yeah. My 75 hard crossed my birthday and Christmas and we had all this alcohol in the house from Christmas, all these mm. boxes of wine and I don't know if our American friends have Baileys. Do they have Baileys in America? I think so, yeah. Oh, Baileys is just, Baileys if you don't, nice. if you don't, I'm not sure. It's like <laughs> delicious, creamy Irish liqueur. And yeah. I, Christmas day, my sisters are there swilling around Oh, you their, can just drink a straight. Oh, yeah. swilling around their Baileys in ice and I'm looking at them and I hate you because I wasn't <laughs> having a drink. And it gets yeah. to the end, it gets to day 76 and in I just drank and drank and drank because it was mm. like, oh, I can now. The rules mm. are off and the rules are gone. Yeah. And I wouldn't do that kind of thing again, mainly because I know you'll tell me off. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. I know that you've got to make these things part of your life. They can't yeah. just be for the short term. Mm-hmm. Or can they, you know, can you dig deep in that fat loss phase? So Again, I think I'm not trying to dissuade anyone from doing a challenge. I think challenges have their place Mm -hmm. and they're fantastic at building camaraderie and community, which is so, so important. And at giving you that um, extrinsic goal, uh, what, needs to be spoken about and if anyone's listening from the 75 hour community <laughs> uh you need to have a plan after the plan after that yeah you, do. you know like yeah. we just spoke uh, um we spoke on the last podcast about the diet after the diet mm-hmm. and that's because a lot of our clients will lose as much weight as they want and then it's like oh i've lost all the weight you know i'll just go back to old habits and behaviors no we set them up with a reverse diet and then their skills strategies and self-awareness to then sustain and maintain the results because that is what people want mm-hmm. now you know, do you have to keep taking the same actions that you did in the challenge afterwards? No. Is there a happy medium? Probably. And I think that is probably where the discussion needs to be is like, you know, hey, you've done 75 hard, you know, maybe have a day of celebration because you've done something for for, for, for quite a considerable yeah. amount of time. And yeah, definitely give yourself a pat on the back. Um, we try to get our clients not to reward themselves with food or alcohol. Yep, <laughs> so yep. I think that can be a good one. Like, <laughs> hey, like go and celebrate, but maybe just not with food or alcohol. You know, go and find some other things to do that don't involve that. Um, but yeah, then just having a plan and a strategy afterwards to make sure that, hey, you know, maybe some of those habits and behaviors and disciplines that you've done over that 75 days, they were probably, there was probably a lot of good in there. Mm. Like, how do you keep a percentage or a portion of that up that now fits with your lifestyle because you've done the challenge? So. Because there is a part of me right now that looks back at that time mm-hmm. and goes, for fuck's sake, why can't you do this? You did yeah. that every day for yeah. 75 days. But mm-hmm. the reality was I was walking with my dogs at midnight yeah. outside on my own on a country lane, stupid. When I look back now, I'm like, what a knob. Yeah. That was just not safe mm-hmm. and really silly. Mm-hmm. It was the middle of winter. It but you're was in it. Freezing. You're in the, you're in the challenge. I, was in it. I get I was doing it. Like, it. I get that. Like when yeah. you're in something, you're in it. And I think that's the beautiful thing of that extrinsic motivation is like, you're going to do the things. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But yeah, is that real? Do you want to be walking your dogs? Um, <laughs> at midnight down a country no. line all the time Pro- probably not no. so is there a happy medium where you go right I'm going to set a step goal for the week you know and I'm going to aim to hit that step goal and you know what if I have a really busy day or my kid gets sick and I have to go and pick him up from school or I have to go and do something else and I only do X amount of steps you know what I'll do more the next day mm-hmm. <laughs> and you have a little bit of flexibility and movement because guess what life happens you know what I mean it's just like it's it's giving yourself that Uh, you've got to have that self-trust as you mentioned earlier but also just not having maybe just such fixated parameters that don't really fit into what a normal life would be otherwise you'll be walking down a country lane at midnight with Um, husband going i think you're stupid i think you're an idiot and we're just going shut up (laughs) yeah Yeah. 
yeah. yeah. But no, I do. You're right, though. There are as well. Like I do a lot of journaling these mm-hmm. days. I know that a lot of our coaches, if it's right for a client, will get them to journal too. Yeah. And it becomes a part of the process of reminding yourself about your why, why you're doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not doing it to be able to go on a Facebook group to the 75 yeah. harders and go, completed it, mate. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> get to do it. You know, yeah. I get to tick off all my 75 hard goals. But that, mm. you're right. That was the extri- extrinsic motivation, yeah. being part of a community. That's you fantastic. Know? You know, being yeah. part of a community is great. You feel like one of us, one yeah. of us. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it, it, it is great. Yeah. There's, a, there's a lot to be said for that. And I'm not, again, I'm not trying to dissuade anyone from challenges, but I'm thinking, you know, let's say you've got a business project to do and we've got this, we've all got this big task that we've all got to chip in. It's like, come on guys, right? We've got the next month, the next 28 days, we're going to sprint and we're going to get all this done mm-hmm. and the project's done and finished and we publish it. Great. Well, that pop project ended your health and fitness doesn't, doesn't end. Yeah, <laughs> and okay, it goes yeah, on forever. Enough. So when yep. you're when you're looking at fitness challenges or any sort of challenges that you're doing towards your health and fitness, can you do sprints and create extrinsic motivation? Yes, I believe you should. I think you should utilize all the variables of motivation, but you do have to look at like, well, what am I going to do afterwards? And I think that's just a really important distinction to be aware of. So you don't just go like all in <laughs> and then all off which is 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 similar to what we're talking about. The, yeah, it's what on, yeah. it's what a lot of a lot of people do. It's mm. why people do 12 week transformations, of course. you know. Yeah. Bride tribe, you know, diet in to get into a wedding dress mm. for example, and it's just so unrealistic that once that wedding day's mm. been and gone and the dress has been packed off to the yeah. dry cleaners, those mm. things, you know, you've not done it from a place of this is improving. Like for you, yeah. uh, this stops me being loopy. You've not done it from a place of that. You've done it from a place of I want to get in a dress or yeah. I want to be hard and say I'm a 75 harder <laughs> at the end. Yeah. And a lot of people do like, they'll, you know, they'll jump on the latest fad. And you got to remember, like, this is the way it's always been. Like, mm. it, like diet, like the way magazines and Instagram and marketing around diets is, it's always been the hard and fast. <laughs> yeah. It has always been that way. No one's ever gone, oh, you're going to do health and fitness for the next 60 years. So, you know, why not just try and go a more slower, sustainable way and create a blueprint that lasts for the rest of your life. You know, it's just, that's never been the marketing because it's not sexy. It's not what people want to hear. Everyone mm-hmm. wants right here, right now, fast. I've got the secrets. I've got the answers. Come to me, give me your money. I'm going to give you this magical pill or magical plan or whatever it is. That is that is what we are drawn to. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it is starting to change. I think people are starting to see through it a little bit more, which is fantastic. Um, but yeah, it's, it, yeah, it is unfortunate. I like doing my daily decisions and this came about from something that you and James, a co-founder of Body Smart, taught me, you know, the super version of me. Who is the super version of me? What is my identity? And I realized we are all just a series of decisions away from being that future version of ourselves, whether that future version of ourselves is the super version or the pretty shit version. (laughs) And up until that point for me, like when I started 75 Hard, Mm -hmm. my decisions that had got me there had led to this massive weight gain, yeah. poor mental health, not feeling mm. great about myself. Mm-hmm. And I did do that 75 hard challenge. I did fall off the rails. Then we had lockdown. Mm. And I think it was around this time last year where I thought, I'm just a product of my repeated decisions. We all are. Like, I'm just, and I like to, <laughs> I like to do it like Bart Simpson lines every week. <laughs> like, what decisions do I get to make yeah. this week? And I've been doing things recently like water, steps, and things like skincare. Mm-hmm. nearly 40 i've actually been washing my face twice a day for the first time in my <laughs> yeah, life and yeah. properly using creams and cleansing yeah. my face and that compound effect of taking of just that one small split course. decision at night when i can't be bothered and i want to get in bed and it's like yep. nope i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it i'm gonna mm-hmm. cleanse my skin i'm gonna put my moisturizer mm-hmm. on and it makes a massive difference yeah. same with the steps same yeah. with tracking honestly yeah. so ha- is that but is that all or nothing no, that is, you are what you repeatedly do. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's, you, you, your habits um, are, are going to be the foundation of, of of how you act and show up in, in multiple areas of your life. Um, you know, and we all have these subconscious and unconscious habits, subconscious habits that we already have. Like, here's a good a good one. Um, when you put your jeans on in the morning, do you put your left foot on first or your right foot? Oh my God. Um, <laughs> right. Are you sure? Uh, I don't know. My, my point is, is that we will all do this and we will probably always yeah, do one foot or the other. I do. And we don't realise, we don't even realise it's even just- Even like put my shoes on. Yeah, it's just- my right one on. Yeah. <gasps> That's blown my head. It's just autopilot. And then sometimes <laughs> yeah. if you've ever been in the car and you're driving 
And then next minute you may be thinking about something and maybe you've just drove home or drove the wrong way because you're just in autopilot. Yeah. And that does happen. And really the way to get your health and fitness in a place where it's it's much easier to stay on top of is to create habits and behaviors that allow you to just, your autopilot, your default is just you being on top of your health and fitness. Right. I want, I, I want to clip this for our Instagram, <laughs> right? So yeah. tell me again. Ask me the question about putting my jeans on and then tell me why we need to autopilot our health and fitness for for our audio only listeners and our full podcast and YouTube listeners. Thanks for bearing with us on this. Go yeah. on, tell me again. So when you put your jeans on in the morning or your pants on in the morning, do you put your left foot on first or do you put your left foot in or your right foot? My right. Your right foot. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of people don't even know. We just do this subconsciously and we don't even realize, but it's just something that we repeatedly do and we don't have to think about. It doesn't require any mental bandwidth. And the way we really create sustainable change or change that's going to last is through behavior change and, and habit change. So the best way of doing this is to get your habits and behaviors on autopilot. So you don't need to be reminded to drink three liters of water. You just do it. You don't need to be reminded to eat healthy. You just do it. You know, you, you already make these decisions without even thinking you're on autopilot. And then what that happens is, is actually when life gets a little bit tougher and things happen, you re it, it's not difficult to navigate your health and fitness because most of it is already on autopilot. It doesn't require as much mental bandwidth. So that's that's probably... <laughs> what about you? Left or right one? I don't even know. I don't even know. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you just do it on autopilot. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant, yeah. brilliant. Can all or nothing thinking ever be a positive trait? Um. Ooh, that's a good question. What do you think? Just passing the baton over to you. Oh, uh, the only specific example I can think of, and I don't know whether this would be classed as, well, I suppose it is. I made a really life-changing decision in February 2020 to stop drinking. Yes. That's all or nothing. That's extremes. It is. Because we we had a body smart night out recently and mm -hmm. Lee, who's on our breakthrough team, was like, why can't you just moderate? Why can't you just have a few? Yeah. And I was like, because mm, I don't want to. It's not and, that yeah. I had a problem with alcohol. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm really enjoying being sober. Yeah. I mean, you're wild enough without alcohol. Exactly. And we do say this. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think in an example like that, definitely. I mean, if we look at what alcohol is, I mean, I, 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 um, I do like having a drink. You know what I mean? Like I think last time I was out with Steph, I think we ordered a, a pint. I ordered a pint and she's a, she's like, you're so giddy. You're so giddy. Like <laughs> knowing that it's coming. And I've been listening to like a lot of neuroscience stuff and, we get a higher dopamine hit before the thing is about to happen that we enjoy. Yeah. So I'll prob probably the anticipation of having a drink, I've got like a smile on my face and she's like, why are you so giddy? And I'm just like, I just want to have a drink. You know what I mean? So, but I do think, uh, you know, if you are somebody that's struggling to lose weight or you're struggling with your mental health, you, you know, alcohol is, is probably a great thing to cut back on or mm -hmm. to cut out completely, at least for a period of time. And I think that's maybe it's not about just moderating. This is something that has empty calories in, will physically affect you in a negative way, will mentally affect you in a negative way. Um, and I know for a lot of people, they might be like, well, I just need that release or I just need to calm down or, you know, it winds me down at the end of the day. I mean, one glass of wine of an evening, um, if you have that, can uh, speed up your heart rate. I think it's something by like five to 10%. Mm -hmm. So your heart can beat an extra three to 4,000 times while you sleep. Whoa. So when you wake up the next day, you literally will feel more anxious. You will feel more lethargic, more tired. You won't have had any deep REM sleep or dream sleep. And all of them things will have a negative feedback loop on every part of your health and fitness and your mental health. So I think, and that's just one glass of wine. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think, um, I, like I like drinking, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, and I've debated many times not drinking, yeah. but I think for some people, and especially if you're in a weight, in a fat loss phase or weight loss phase, I think actually going through an allotted period of time of not drinking mm -hmm. is a really, really good thing. And I actually think for yourself, not drinking is, is probably- It's definitely the best decision. Well, that, that was one of my motivations was that when I was drunk or hungover, I made poor food choices. Of course. And then I always yeah. felt like I was in that cycle of being a weekend warrior. Mm -hmm. The weekend was my weekend, Yeah, you know, yeah, because yeah. I was either drunk and eating kebabs at two o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. stuffing my face with chips and garlic mayo, yeah. or hungover, surviving off of three tubs of Pringles and full yeah. fat Coke to try and get over it. And then yeah. feeling crap Monday to Friday. Oh, you do. Yeah. It, the food guilt and everything. Of course. And mm -hmm. then, yeah, when I chose to to go sober initially, I did it as a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yeah, yeah. I did it as a 90-day yeah. challenge and then I just thought, wow. 
this feels good. The anxiety went, my heart rate improved massively. Mm. And the reality is I don't need a drink. I'm the first person on the dance floor. You I'm are. the last person are. off it. <laughs> Just didn't need a drink. Yeah. So I kind of figured, and I, I, I like, I like driving and getting people home. I like oh, it's being funny you heard everyone. Just people hit that night, uh, point in the night out, don't they? Where they just really stop making sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you get to witness all that crap. It's great. I remember it. <laughs> it's absolutely. Um, so yes, back to your question. I think in if, if 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 you know yourself, if you're self-aware enough, I think sometimes making decisions like that can be positive. Where you're playing into that all mm-hmm. enough mindset. Um, but for the most part, I think they can be. They can be if we don't think about what what after can be a negative. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's probably why it doesn't feel all or nothing to me because I can't I can't think of any good reasons to start drinking again. Yeah. I'm not that bothered. The mm-hmm. only thing I miss is a glass of red wine in front Inside. of a fire. That's yeah. it. That's the only thing I miss. Yeah. And you can't get decent non-alcoholic red wine. Mm-hmm. It's like vinegar and piss. It's yeah. awful. <laughs> Absolutely awful. <laughs> I think it's just one of them though if, the, if it's just like if you look at the list of positives that you've got yeah, and you've exactly. got like the one that you maybe miss, I think it's like the pros outweigh the yeah, ones. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> right. One yeah. of the things about being a perfectionist and having an all or nothing mindset is that fear of failure. Oh yeah. That's that plays massive, particularly for perfectionists. Mm-hmm. So the fear of failing at something will often stop people from taking action. Yeah. The fear of not having the perfect plan will stop people executing a. What's it called? An- analysis paralysis. Analysis. Yeah. yeah analysis, analysis paralysis. paralysis. Yeah. That's a mouthful, isn't it? It's a fancy word that's, for that's, someone with a lisp. That's one. That's one, to, <laughs> yeah. that's one to do on the next night out yeah. <laughs> for the rest mm-hmm. of you. But can failure ever be a good thing? Is it good for people to fail? failure is an amazing thing um i guess it's it's what we mean by failures i think in in growth micro failures is what i like to call them are are super super important uh, failure is like or micro failures are controlled practice you mm-hmm. know like let's say you go and play tennis or play a sport you know what i mean and you keep messing up a hand you know you keep failing at like maybe a shot or whatever else well, that's like it's controlled practice in a way and in a, in a sense you can keep learning from that to eventually make the shot mm-hmm. and you can look at this in like lots of different parts of your health and fitness like let's say you're tracking your food or let's say um you know you lift a weight that's too heavy for you and you fail at that set you know so that you track the food um and you get home and then you realize oh shit it's got twice as many calories in it mm. you're just like oh crap so you can be like i failed i ruined my diet for the day what's the point i'll start on monday yeah. instead what you could do is you could be like right well i'm not going to make that mistake again i've learned from that experience mm-hmm. and that's a positive thing because the more of those experiences i go through the more i just keep learning the more i grow the better of a place i'm in the more educated i'm about food and i'm less likely to keep messing up on my diet same with your exercises you know so you're in the gym and you go and lift the weight that's a little bit too heavy or you do something that is maybe just too challenging and you and you fail you go okay right i've, I've maybe pushed over my limits a little bit mm-hmm. i'll dial it back I and mean, i'm gonna find that happy medium or that sweet spot there's loads of examples i think people's re- relationship with failure is is really really poor and bad i am um, and mine used to be like it used to i used to not um embrace failure in that way and if i were to start something new i would actually be scared of like all the things that i've got to learn uh, versus now if i go and start something new i'm just like oh my god like i can't wait because i know in the beginning you're gonna have the most amount of growth yeah <laughs> it, it, like, allow in... yourself the grace to be a beginner exactly you <laughs> learn you just you're able to just you, you'll see more progress in the beginning mm-hmm. than you will in than, than anything else after after like a year or two of doing anything normally even like playing an instrument or a sport after that it's just like incrementally dialing things in mm-hmm. and that's what it comes down to so yeah, it's. Uh, I think people's relationship with failure is, is really bad. Um, I think we need to get to a point of embracing failure and realizing that it's part of the journey and that it teaches you all the important lessons of what not to do. And if we want a, a better way of looking at failure, or if you want to not fail as much on any journey, uh, the best thing you can do is learn from other people's mistakes. That is the way of, of cutting it out. So you've got things like books and courses and YouTube videos. Podcasts. Podcasts. Yeah. You guys are here. Uh, they are all going to allow you to learn from other people's experiences and mistakes. And then if you want to take it a step further, you're going to hire a coach or somebody mm-hmm. that has repeatedly, uh, has not only maybe achieved the success that you're looking for yourself, but then has also been able to repeatedly do it with other people that look like you because they have probably got a closer blueprint of how to get you results than anyone else. And that can be in business, it can be in health, it can be in fitness, it can be in whatever else because if they've been able to repeatedly do it with people that look like you, they clearly know where the hurdles 
and people mess up on the jumps and what are they going to be able to do? They're going to be able to navigate you yeah. around this. So you're going to be able to get from A to B in a shorter space of time. You're not going to have to go through the pain of making a lot of the mistakes mm -hmm. because they're going to guide you past them and through them. It doesn't mean that you're not going to make mistakes. You 100% are because you, you have to in order to become more self-aware. Yeah. But they can definitely guide you there a lot faster. It's hard though sometimes, isn't it? Like I'll, I'll use myself as an example on this and it's something I've been talking about on my own social mm -hmm. media recently and I've had a few people contact me saying, oh, I'd never even thought of that. With my own journey with food, I will, I now know I will overeat due to a number of different factors and mm -hmm. thanks to the work that I've done with Kelly, my coach at Body Smart, I have failed multiple times on my journey with coaching with Kelly so far. And I hated this in the beginning. I felt like such a failure, overeating on mm -hmm. calories, eating too much, turning to food. But over time, she slowly unpicked this for me and helped me understand like, what was the, what was the thought or the environment or the person yeah. or the the trigger, the habit that's, mm -hmm. that's made that happen. And recently I've got to a point where, I, I'll give you an example. So last week we are building Ikea furniture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> me and my husband yeah ugh. bearing in mind the ikea furniture has been in the hall for six weeks okay so number one mm -hmm. issue is why have you not built that mm -hmm. because why did your man brain not go <laughs> if i build that furniture she's gonna be really happy anyway that's a conversation <laughs> for another day hey, i've got a man brain over here still hey. a bit bitter <laughs> yeah so hey. Then, then the next thing is we start building it together and it's just so hard and stressful and it's late at night mm -hmm. and my head's going, I haven't got time for this. Mm -hmm. I haven't got time for this. My kid's got to get in bed. It's late. And after we'd finished it, I went downstairs, went to the cupboard, opened the bread, yep. put it in the toaster, hit the button. Mm -hmm. And I went, no, <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah. That is one of my triggers because I've got one of my main triggers is that my time is not my own or I don't have enough time. Mm -hmm. So the fact that the, the drawers had been there for six weeks and my husband hadn't put them up was was yeah. number one insult to my time. So yeah. that triggered me. The fact that it was late and the fact that it took too much time immediately made me go and turn to food. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, I am stress eating right now. This yeah. is a stress response. This is not me thinking rationally. Mm -hmm. So I popped that half done toast up and I put it back in the bag <laughs> nice. and I put it back yeah. in the cupboard and yeah. it was like that was a moment where I was so happy and mm -hmm. so proud and those moments are getting easier yeah. but I wouldn't have been able to get to that point had I not failed at that multiple times over yeah. and I have to go back and forgive that Gemma six months ago who did keep messing up with that because mm -hmm. I needed to mess up. I needed you those did. failures. I needed those micro failures to get to this point now. And you actually need the pain of it as yeah. well. Because just like when you go and kick your toe into the bed, <laughs> the side of the bed, <laughs> and it hurts like hell, yeah, it's it makes you realize that, hey, I don't want to do that again. And you become a little bit, bit, a bit more aware. Yeah. The pain of failure on your diet, it feels extremely uncomfortable. It makes you want to go, what's the point? Sod it. But as we spoke about before, your health and fitness is a lifelong game. So you can either use that experience to learn from it, like you have, mm -hmm. and keep, look, you know, I think this is the difficult part. Like, you know, we'll have some clients that, you know, uh, are looking for a strategy that's going to work. And I can say to them, like, well, I think I've got about three or four that could work for you around this problem that they're facing. But they might have to go through three or four cycles of failure to then find that one thing that works for them. The difference there with a coach is I might have three or four that I know is going to work for that type of person mm -hmm. versus that if they didn't have a coach, they might have to go through a hundred, which most people won't. And that's why they'll give up. So I think the pain is, is an, you kind of have to sit with the pain a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like, oh shit, like I just emotionally ate or oh shit, I just stress ate or whatever happened. And you kind of have to sit with that pain and it, it's difficult. You've got to reflect and be very honest with yourself around why that happened and understand your triggers and your emotions and everything else that comes with it. And that's, that's not an easy task, not in the busy it lives that we take, all But it does take time. It takes time and it takes it mental bandwidth. Yeah. It does. And I think this is, um, you know, a big part of where people get into like binary thinking of like, I'm on a diet, I'm off a diet, or I'm just going to do all the things, I'm going to do nothing. That's easy. That is one decision. Mm. You think about that, you just go, you know what? Just eat all the toast in the house. I just <laughs> ate three pizzas. I just ate all the jelly beans. You know what I mean? You go, fuck it. I'm not on my diet anymore. One decision. Mm -hmm. versus what you've just explained is you've just gone through a failure. You've had to sit with that pain, which mm -hmm. is very uncomfortable. People don't want to do that. You've then spoke to your coach. Yeah. They've then da asked you 101 questions around why. You've started to understand your behaviors and everything else around mm -hmm. that. And then you've started to understand why that happens. That's being 
multiple decisions multiple times and now you've started to figure out a blueprint of success yeah so that's a lot of decisions and for a lot of people that they just haven't got the mental bandwidth to be able to do that or maybe the, or support, the support yeah that's the what support. i was about to say i am yeah. biased obviously i am biased mm -hmm. but like that i feel like i've made more progress in the last i don't know six months than mm -hmm. i have in 20 years because Amazing. it's it's that yeah. it's unpicking everything at that foundational level because we mm. all do stuff, you know, because of things that you know. Yep. For me, growing up, we we grew up in food poverty, you yeah. know, without food, food mm. was scarce. Mm. You you had to clear your plates because yeah. there's there's kids starving in Africa, yeah, yeah. and you know, my yeah. friend Claire used to say she she was taught something where a coach said to her, "What are you going to do? Are you going to are you going to pack it up and and send it? No." You're not. Mm. There are other ways in which you can help. And if you really want to help, get involved in charitable causes. Yeah. You putting your food in the bin is not going to help people and it's going to hurt you. Yeah. You know, not doing that action. So it, it is, it's one of those, it's it's really difficult to get to that foundational level of thinking yeah. that then your thoughts create your, your you're better at this than me. <laughs> your thoughts create your behavior that creates your action. I'm not sure fully how it Yeah, how something, goes. something yeah. like that, yeah, isn't yeah. it? But it is. It's, but no, it's, it's yeah, coming yeah. back to that yeah. foundational. Ah, this has happened, yeah. and being able to recognise it has been amazing. Because mm -hmm. the more I do it, mm -hmm. the more I'm like, "Yeah, Jim, we've yeah. got this. Shit. <laughs> we're get, we're yeah. undoing all you're of this." You're figuring it out. You're figuring yeah. out yourself, and that's why I think we speak literally about this in every single podcast, which is the golden gem, the one thing that you have to be aware, that you have to get in order to be successful for your health and fitness, you have to become self-aware. Yeah. Uh, everything we're talking about now is making space to become self-aware. The more you know yourself, the easier, the, your, the easier it is to make the right decisions that are gonna positively affect you. If you keep making decisions that negatively impact your behavior, you need to start asking why. You need to dig into that and guess what? For a lot of people, it's very painful. And sometimes you just don't have the mental space or bandwidth to do that. And if you don't reach out, you know, ask for help. There's a lot of help out there. There's a lot of resources. Um, and if you're seeing that this has been repeated behavior that's been going on for months, years, decades, look for help. There is help. There is a way out. There are people like you have, who have also found success. Doesn't mean you've not got to put in the work, but there is a way of, of getting into a much better place. My final question yep. would be for somebody who's listening to this podcast who thinks, yeah, that's me. I've got mm. that all or nothing mentality. I can be a bit of a perfectionist and that's okay. You mm. know, it's, it's, you know, it's recognizing it, being self-aware. Mm. What advice would you give? That you need to remove that level of like binary thinking, like on a diet, off a diet, or it's it just this way or that way. Um, that is, like we said, an easier decision to make. It's just, it's just one singular decision. And we're all so busy nowadays. We've got busy jobs, busy lives, kids. There's a million different things going on social media. There's just everything's grabbing and pulling you this, uh, your attention and, take, and taking decision bandwidth. Um, so if you get into a place where, you know, you really want to start being more successful with your health and fitness, you do have to create space. And I think one of the best ways you can uh, create space to have, to be able to make more decisions and to become more self-aware is, is the plan. I think uh, a lot of people are just like, right, I'm going to eat healthy this week. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, what does that even mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? So you're going to go into the month, into Monday and it's like, right, I'm going to eat healthy today. And it's like, well, what's in the cupboard? Have you, have you gone shops? Have you prepped anything? Have you even created a plan for that day? There's, then there's all these extra decisions to make. And you just, you're already setting yourself up for failure because you might get a couple of days in with willpower and then life's going to happen. You know, mm -hmm. your boss might be a dick or your kid might be, <laughs> you know, or your, your kid might be screaming when you get home. Yeah. And it's just like, what? So then it's just like, oh, you know, and your default might just be to go back to whatever dinner that you normally have or just to grab something or, in the cupboard. Or take out, which a lot of yeah. us do. Versus that if on Sunday you went to the shops, you bought your food for the week, you planned out Monday to Friday, mm -hmm. everything that you're going to eat, you, you've already reduced the friction and the decisions and the bandwidth so that you're able to stick to the plan throughout the week. And then also, if you do mess up because you've, you know, on one day, you can maybe sit with that a little bit longer, reflect and understand why, because you've got a little bit more mental space. You already go, right, you know what? I've got, I messed up on Wednesday. I'm going to sit with that on Wednesday and Thursday, but Thursday and Friday are already planned out. So I can just get straight back yeah. on it. You've not got to wait till Monday. So by planning and prepping, you're able to create space to be more self-aware. And I think that's just, just really important because again, I think a lot of people speaking, speak binary, I'm on a diet, I'm off a diet, instead of just going, you know what, I've overeaten. Why did I overeat? Can I try and understand that? Right, I've got a plan to get back on track tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm going to follow that. I'm going to try and understand why my behaviors and decisions led that way. I'm going to learn from that. 
I'm going to embrace that failure. I'm going to embrace the suck, as we've said before. <laughs> and I'm That's gonna, my yeah. wallpaper. It says <laughs> um, that, my wallpaper. Yeah, before. and we're going to keep taking those steps forward. Yeah, because a lot of, you know, willpower, we've got a piece of content that says, is willpower bullshit? Mm. And yeah, you know, willpower mm. is not this infinite source of yeah. discipline at mm. all, is it? It's about decision fatigue that's what willpower comes down yeah, to and, having to make too many decisions and, and being overwhelmed and most of the time when people are overwhelmed it's through lack of a routine lack of a plan or an unrealistic time frame so if you're going into the week with uh no routine around you know your health and fitness being on autopilot like we mm-hmm. were speaking about earlier you've got no plan and then maybe you've gave yourself some unrealistic time frame of like, lose so much weight in three weeks like you're all putting so much pressure on yourself that you are literally setting yourself up to fail. Mm-hmm. So, you know, maybe removing that time or managing your expectations around when you should get the results, creating a plan until it becomes a routine. You, you keep putting yourself in a position to su- succeed, not fail. So removing those decisions, <laughs> automating your life, becoming self-aware and embracing failure. I think they've been the key points from this, this episode. Yeah, 100%. So if anybody is listening and they would like that support to kind of come out of that all or nothing thinking or even be helped with that plan making all these decisions more automated being held accountable if they want support with their nutrition fitness and mindset where should they go bodysmartfitness.com 